Welcome to Stuff in Whiskey. I'm Josh. And I'm Aaron. And today we're talking about the perfect price to pay for whiskey. What's our sweet spot and when do we hit the law of diminishing returns? Welcome to the channel, bringing a real world perspective to the real world whiskey consumer. Like we said, we're talking about the perfect price for whiskey, what yep. we're happy paying, and a little bit about diminishing returns once yep. we cross over a certain price point. But before we get into that, we got to get into the first sip, which is a segment that we do at the start of every Tuesday episode where we try something that we've never tried before. We've never tasted it before. This is our very first sip of it. And it's also totally blind. We have a pool of samples that we draw from for this. So not only are you getting an unbiased opinion, but we have no familiarity with the product either. So let's get into it. All right. Cheers. Cheers. It smells sweet. It smells very sweet. I'm getting a whole lot of apple like a really apple -y sweetness. A little apple -y apple? Well, it's a very apple -y apple, yeah. But it's it's that classic bourbon profile, but mm -hmm. the, the fruit is very forward on it. And it's almost like a real fruit note. It's not like a fruit candy. It's not anything artificial. It's but almost like a real fruit. I would say a Honeycrisp apple. Yeah, I can get with that. All right. Let's get into the palate. It smells good. This is good. It's still fruit forward. You sound confused. <laughs> no. It, it's still fruit forward, but it's not super overly sweet. I don't like things that are overly sweet that I'm going to get a sugar hangover. I feel like I'm going to get a sugar hangover. Yeah. And I don't feel like this is one of those, which I like. The fruit is very forward. It is very sweet, but the, the sweetness is tempered by some oak that's there. The oak is also sweet. Mm -hmm. It's not leaning too bitter. I need another sip just to see what's up. Same. I think I really like this, the oak the apple oak combo yeah it's, it works it's nicely balanced it's really soft on the palate it's a good pour yeah it's good it's enjoyable um I, I don't know that i have a ton more to say than that it's not super complex it's got it seems low proof and it's got some decent viscosity and oiliness for its proof point the finish is hanging out for a good while yeah. for its proof point it's not the type of pour that I typically gravitate towards. It's lacking a little bit in the areas of spice and complexity and proof that I tend to enjoy, but it is very enjoyable. I like it. This to me is a very good uh, example of what I would consider to be like a summertime sipper. Like mm. it's hot outside. I'm kind of wanting to steer away from the heavier flavors and the proof that I tend to enjoy more often. And I want something that's just easy and light. Like I could see, you know, sitting by a body of water sipping on this mm -hmm. that would be a great use case for this yeah so let's find out what it is okay i can't wait to well, see we oh we gotta hang it? on i'm jumping yeah i'm putting the cart before the horse we gotta rate this thing yeah nose flavor experience where are you at thumbs up across the board for me yeah solid. it's solid i think i'm the same place i think i'm thumbs up across the board really good solid pour it's not blowing me away in any single way right and it's not off putting in any single way right it's, and when we say something thumbs up across the board, that's what we mean. Mm -hmm. It's a good, solid pour. Mm -hmm. Let's find out what it is. Okay. This is Weller 12. Oh, wow. So 90 proof, yeah. low proof. The softness on the palate makes sense. Weller's kind of known for that. We did whiskey is kind of known for that. It doesn't have any rice spice, so you're not getting yeah. any rice spice. The whole consumer conversation around price, availability, value, and whether you'd buy this again or not is a very interesting one. Okay. Weller 12 is insanely difficult to find. Oh man. It should be a $50 bottle. I think at retail, I would be happy paying $50 for this. The problem is, is it only comes out once a year. Okay. It's crazy hard to get your hands on. It's pretty much like a raffle item or you got to have a hookup or you got to buy it in a bundle, which is how we got it. It happened to be bundled with two other things mm. that we also wanted. And we paid X amount of dollars for the bundle. If you take away the price of those other two products, we paid $90 for this. Mm. I'm, I don't think it's a very good $90 whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a decent $50 whiskey. If it were like 30 or $40, I'd say it's a great 30 or $40 whiskey. Yeah. Decent $50 whiskey, not a great $90 whiskey. It's going for about $225 or $250 on secondary. Okay. So let's rate this thing on retail and consumer metrics. Okay. Retail being the price and availability and consumer being whether you would buy it again or not. Price availability, 
pretty much unobtainable without a hookup or a lottery win. I mean, if it's unattainable and I can't get it, I'm going to give it a thumbs down. Yeah. Yeah. But let's say you walked into a store and for some crazy chance, you see Weller 12 sitting in front of you on a shelf for 50 bucks. Are you buying it? Um, I'm going to give it just okay, which okay. means I could take it or leave it depending on how I'm feeling because there are other $50 bottles that I might buy more. I think I'm kind of in the same camp. I kind of hinted at this, but it's a thumbs down on a retail score for mm -hmm. me. The availability just kills it here. Yeah. And even at 90, you know, we got it because of the channel and we wanted to have this bottle for some head to heads. I'm glad it finally popped up in the single blind sample pool. Mm -hmm. We've been sitting on this bottle since Christmas and now I can actually put it into some head to heads against some other things. So I'm happy to get into it for that purpose. Yeah. Would I buy it again or not at $50 sitting on the shelf? <sighs> I think I'm a just okay as well. Okay. Um, I mean, there's so many other bottles for 50 bucks that I would prefer to have more. Yeah. That just have a little bit more in the way of proof and complexity. I think that's where I'm at too. And there's other sweet, kind of simple, good quality pours for 30 or $40 a yeah. bottle that I could yeah. get that kind of fit that summertime sipper thing just as well. Yeah. So this was very interesting. The whole consumer part of the equation on this is a great lead into our main conversation talking about price. But before we get into that, head on down to the video description below, check out the link to our Patreon community. It's kind of the interactive element of the channel. You can get plugged in over there, join the discord that we have. That's our, that is our online social media platform. Mm -hmm. That's where we do our thing over there. And then we also have whiskey nerd info where you can see these blind ratings that we have yep. in a spreadsheet. We have two additional episodes every week over there on Patreon. And then we also have a Whiskey with Friends tier where we do a private patron live stream once a month. And once a quarter, we do a patron blind flight night where participants get sent blind flights and we get on a live stream and do that together privately. It's a ton it's of a fun of to fun. walk through. Yeah. And if you can't get enough stuff and whiskey, we also have a merch website at stuffandwhiskey.com. Mm -hmm. You can check it out. We've got t-shirts, dad hats, some travel mugs, all kinds of stuff over there. So go check it out. Absolutely. And leave us a comment below. While you're down there, hit the like and subscribe buttons, hit the bell, but leave us a comment below if you've yeah. had Weller 12, what you think of it, if you're willing to say it, what you paid for it, and what you think a fair price is for mm. this product. With that said, let's get into our main topic where we're talking about the perfect price for whiskey. And this is a really interesting conversation because it's going to vary wildly between person to person, right? Abs it varies widely between you and I. It does. It does. But I would say through blind tastings, the delta between what your perfect price and my perfect price is has, has shrunk, shrunk significantly yeah. because... I used to be much more willing to spend more for whiskey. Yeah. And now I think I can get much better whiskey than I thought I could at lower prices than I thought I could. So that's been a really nice revelation through blind tastings. So hit us with it. What's your sweet spot? So I think I've said this before, but my sweet spot is about $50, give or take 10. So mm -hmm. in the 40 to 60 range, but 50 is right there in the middle. And for me, it's not too much different. I would say $60 is my sweet spot. And my range would be more like 40 to 80. Okay. I'm, I'm really happy in that range as far as like on the low end, having some things that compare very favorably to this that mm -hmm. I like more. And then on the upper end of that, having some products that have a little bit more proof, a little bit more flavor. Yeah. Uh, and you're going to pay some money for that proof and, and all that stuff. So diminishing returns is another ball game, though. That's a whole nother conversation, yep. kind of. But you know, from a $15 whiskey to a $30 whiskey, you can usually tell a fairly big difference. Mm -hmm. But at what point do you think you hit a price where you stop seeing much of an increase in quality for what you spend? I'd say around that $60 price point for yeah. me. Yeah. I, I've had some that I would maybe call better that are a little higher price, but not a lot. So for me, it's about that $60 price point. I see not much change. Do you, price. do you feel like the reason that that $60 price point is your sweet spot is because through experience now you've gathered that you really don't need to spend much more than that to get something you really like? Yeah, absolutely. I would say that's why I said it was kind of a separate topic, mm -hmm. but it really is tied in because I think I, it's the same for me. Oh yeah? Yeah. It's much more than about, I, I would say much more than about 80 or $90. You just really start to run into a very limited increase in quality. And again, this is all backed up by blind tastings that we've done mm -hmm. both on this channel and for, 
you know, a period of time prior to even starting the channel that in blind tastings, you can put a $150 bottle up against a $50 bottle and you don't really detect that big of a difference if you don't know either one of those two products are in your what glass. What you're tasting, yeah. And it's happened time and time again. But I can think of plenty of 80 or $90 products that are definitely worth the money. We're okay. not saying that the higher price products aren't worth the money, even like a $150 product. We're not saying that's worth not worth the money. Right. It's just you may not be getting, it may not be a straight jump from $50 quality to $150 quality. The yeah. quality may not double with the price. Yeah. From, from $75 to $150, you're increasing price double. But you might not you might not be it, increasing quality double. It may only be a marginal increase in quality. So if you're somebody and you've renewed a hobby and you're looking around at price tags at stores and you see something for 30 and you see something for 130, don't necessarily feel like you're gonna get that big of a difference in the quality between the two products. Now there will be a difference there mm -hmm. for sure, especially if you're drinking them both side by side, your mind will play tricks on you and it will either convince you that there's a hundred dollar difference or it will go the other way and convince you that there's not a hundred dollar difference yeah. and that it was a waste of money which is why we advocate for blind tasting so much. But just beware when you're out there shopping, pay attention to your price tags, and as we always say, stick to your budget. You gotta stick to that budget. You gotta stick to the budget. That's it for the topic this week. What do we have for other stuff? Our other stuff this week is some Netflix, as we tend to do. Always Netflixing, guys, yeah. always. So we were looking for something to watch uh, because you've pretty much exhausted your entire queue. Yep. And I finding something that we want to watch together can be tricky sometimes. And you were like, what about this show? It kept popping up on the algorithm. Yeah. So. And it's it's called Safe, S-A-F-E. And who's the author? Harlan Corbin? Coben? Cor Cor Harlan, oh, I should look this up. Harlan Corbin? Yeah. He's a, it's a based off of a book by Harlan Corbin. If I'm wrong, we'll fix yeah. that in the video. <laughs> and what drew us in, and it's in the video description below, by Might the way. Coben. But. Coben. But if you look in the video description below, you'll find a link to it. But what drew us in was the fact that the main character in this is Dexter. Michael C. Hall. Yeah. And so we love Dexter and we don't have Showtime, so we haven't seen the new, the new Dexter, yeah. but we love the original Dexter. We got sucked into this and this is going to be a terrible pitch because we can't say a lot about it, but we will tell you that if you start watching it and you get a couple of episodes in, it's like a short series, like a limited six, series, six yeah. or seven episodes. Mm -hmm. you, you'll understand why we can't say much about it, but if you're looking for something to watch, look, it's not going to win any awards or anything like that. But it's an interesting watch. It's kind of a little bit of a murder mystery who done it, but there's a little bit of a little bit of uh, vagueness going on, yeah. and it all makes sense. You in the may end. be a little confused at first, but it all comes together really well. At the yeah, end. yeah, they do a really good job with it. So check that out if you're looking for something to watch. It's quite an enjoyable watch. Yeah. So check it out. It's in the video description below. And that's it for this week, guys. So if you're new around here, we're all about just having a good time with whiskey and friends. So be sure to tune in for our Tuesday videos that happen just like this every week, our Thursday blind head to heads, our monthly live streams, and our October charity live stream, which if you wanna be a part of that, hit us up at stuffandwhiskey at gmail.com. That's in the video description below as well. Till next week, guys. Cheers. Cheers.